Welcome back to Universe. I'm Andrew, and today I'm playing Earthborn Rangers. This is part eight of my campaign playthrough, and it is day nine. This is going to be another perfect day based on the weather on the campaign tracker. We are one day out from triggering a delayed event that was set up by my mission to go to the Spire, which I did. At the Spire, I got a mission to set up a sensor network, which I've completed two out of three. So I'm not sure what to expect from that. Other missions that set up delayed events like that, when they triggered, if you had completed the mission, and again, my mission was to go to Spire, uh, just give you a minor bonus. So it could just be a minor bonus, but I have this feeling that it is linked to this sensor network, which I have not yet completed, and that I'm going to be punished in some way for not having completely completed that. Again, I need to set up sensors in three locations, and I've done two of those. I'm not really good thinking I'm going to finish that uh, third one today because I'm going to focus on my other mission, Deeper Motives, which has a trigger two days after that on day 12. And I want to make sure I get this one done. I need to go to Tumble Down and speak to Spirit Speaker now about the mysterious Verdesian. And because Tumble Down is way over in the south way down here. So I wanted to focus on getting that one done. My third sensor network location is over here at the plummet. And I should say, if this is your first of my Earthborn Rangers campaign videos you're watching, I recommend that you go to the playlist link in the description to check out the campaign for the beginning, but you're welcome to join me either way. Uh, I am at the Marsh of Rebirth right now, which is interesting in its own right. And even though I don't have a mission for it, I am interested in exploring this a little bit. Although I'm also scared because there's these big hydro worms that I was kind of equipped for late in the day going into in the previous day and now starting out the day with not quite as many resources built up I am a little worried so we'll see if I have to just kind of make a break for it or what my options end up being but there is some interesting stuff I'd like to find uh, Martha Marsh of Rebirth is a special location you can't even get to because there are no paths leading to it so I actually had to do I kind of found a path in the previous day that enabled me to get here in the first place. Now when I leave, I can go to wherever I want, which will be the Frowning Gate, because that is gonna be path by which I can then go to Bowl of the Sun and Tumble Down, which is my ultimate destination. But let's see, I think it's reasonable that I could get to Tumble Down today, but that depends on how much time I spend here at the March Marsh of Rebirth and how hard these Hydra Worms beat me up. So this is our location, it got a two present and five to traverse it, five progress required. When you travel, travel at any location connected to a swamp path, use swamp terrain. Uh, so the ability here is just that we can leave basically because it's not actually connected to a path. Go ahead and read entry nine just to get into the theme even though we read it in the previous day. The marsh of rebirth is the very heart of the swamp, a swirling morass of sluggish currents and thick waters stained with tannins. The heavy humid stench of rot fills your nostrils, but despite the smell, the oxygen-rich air leaves you feeling invigorated. The Marsh of Rebirth is a place of decay and death, but also of newborn life. So we're going to use the Swamp Terrain. I'm using the same path deck as I did the previous day because I ended here. And I'm going to have to search the path deck for the next Hydra Worm. So I'm going to start with a Hydra Worm out, which could be a pain. Uh, but I'm going to wait. Well, I guess we may as well just do that since we know it's coming. We can see there's a Hydra Worm already. Shuffle this back. Got my perfect day weather set up. It's the last one before we go back to a downpour. And let's take a look at a Hydra Worm. Quick reminder, two presents. It's going to be within reach. If I clear it with harm, I can add a harm to each other Hydra Worm. On a sun, if it has any harm, I search for another Hydra Worm. On a mountain, if there's another Hydra Worm, one moves with... Uh, along the way and on a crest it will become exhausted and I take an injury which I really don't want so that'll be what I'm really trying to avoid so with that in mind let's take a look at my opening hand and see what I can mulligan to try to deal with this the best at least six cards thought it was five for a second I got two ranger badge which isn't which are good but aren't immediately going to help me deal with hydra worms same with bold and shape the earth Oh, seeing through cycles could do it. Just a single card. I can get rid of this guy. I start with a single song on my Scepter of Harmony. And this is Manifestation, so I'd have to spend my one song. I bit my tongue today, so I'm having trouble talking, but I'll do my best. Choose a being, shuffle it into the path deck, search path deck, and discard four being put into play. So at the end of the previous day, I was fighting the big nasty Hydra Worm, which was the Royal. I don't know if I'm up for that, but I'd like to be able to beat that one. Because uh, I get 
to read some interesting lore text, probably. I assume it's probably going to be interesting. Well, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to keep seen through cycles as well as Sky Whip, because this is the way I actually do the harm. Uh, but they're both manifestations. And again, I only have one song, so you can play one or the other until I build more up. And I build them up by doing tests and not triggering uh, challenge icons. But I want to avoid doing tests because I don't want to trigger any of these challenge icons. Still, though, I think I'm going to keep both of those and set these aside. Redraw four replacements, which is the Trowel, Throng of Life, Sky Whip again, and Carbon Forge Trowel again. I don't know what I was looking for, but I don't think it was that. I would have liked Riri, I think. Oh, and this should be within reach. All right, and then just normal setup rules, or rather gameplay rules. We'll start round one, and round one is to play a path card. So this will come straight off the top, and there's another Hydra Worm. So this is what I was talking about. On the previous day, I was able to just kind of connect with them, with Nalt's understanding and a bunch of songs I'd build up on my scepter. All right, well, I don't think I want to deal with two of these. So I will play a scene through cycles. This also lets me look through the path deck and I can just look at the contents. I mean, I guess I could just look at it anyway, but I kind of wait to get surprised. But in this case, this is also just a card effect letting me search. And I kind of just want to know what I'm looking for or whether I'm wasting my time. All right, well, I'm playing this. So let's search the path deck. I'm going to shuffle in one of these Hydra Worms and um, Search for a different being. All right, well, there are only two cards that are specific to the March of Rebirth. One of them was the Roiling Invention we faced in the previous episode, and the other one is the one I'm choosing here. So there's not too much to spoil. There is another card that is just specific to the Swamp that I hadn't seen yet, uh, and I won't spoil that, just in case you don't like spoilers. But it would be interesting to find, I think. Uh, for now, we're going to shuffle up. And we're going to meet Ale, the Ambitious Shaper. And if I recall correctly, this is the name that was mentioned as having perhaps caused the flood, the rising waters. So let's meet him and read entry 74. 74.3. As you slog through the half-drowned trail, you hear a splashing in the water up ahead. You look to see Ale sitting on a log. The Shaper looks half-drenched and thoroughly miserable. What are you doing here? He grunts, refusing to look in your direction. Can't you leave me in peace? Clear Ale with progress to convince him to use his powers again. All right, so he's feeling, feeling guilty about the flood. And progress is a thing I'm pretty good at, although I just spent two of my three spirit. Um, he can also soak some damage for me. His crest ability is that if there's an active predator, exhaust it and add harm to him equal to the predator's presence. The Hydra Worm is a predator, so if I do trigger a crest... I can choose which one to resolve first. I can choose Ale, exhaust the Hydra Worm, and put two harm on Ale, and he has a five harm threshold. So you can do that twice. So I might have him tank these Hydra Worms for me as I try to deal with them. So let's see how that goes. I'm a little bit less scared of tests now, although I do want to be able to clear him. I want to see what he's up to. I don't have a song, so I cannot play a manifestation. Let's do a basic spirit test to connect with him. I'll spend one spirit on that and zero connection icons. And I might be able to get a little progress on him. And I also might just be able to build up some songs. And I'm a little less afraid of the crest now. Plus, it could be a boon because if I do hit a crest, he'll take some harm. But then Hydra Worm becomes exhausted without me having to try to avoid it. And then I can try to traverse the location for when I'm ready to go. So for now, I'm just connecting with a one. Checking yellow is a plus one. So I actually get two progress on ale. Just one more to go. I got the mountain. And actually, that triggers a perfect day. If this Ted added progress, add an additional one. So that's going to make it three. And he's going to be cleared. So I guess there goes my tank. Uh, let's see what his entry for that is, though. 74.5, as Ale tries to focus on his conduit, you remind him to focus on just what is needed, not what is possible. Your quiet, firm voice helps center him, and he slowly but surely begins to reach out into the sky. Clouds skid across the horizon as the weather of the valley begins to change. Replace the weather card with another of your choice. It maintains the same number of tokens. And then discard him. Well, 
I already liked my weather. Thought I was going to get some interesting story, but I guess not. All right, then continuing to resolve the mountains. This one says if now and the mysterious Verdessian are in play but and are ready, but they're not. And the Hydro Worm says if there's another Hydro Worm in the same area, but there's not. I did resolve one effect, though, which was a perfect day, so I won't get a song. And that was not as uh, exciting as I was hoping. Now I guess I do need to do an avoid test to awareness and conflict. I need to get a two to succeed because it has a two presence, but that's fine. Let's do that. I got a zero, so a two will succeed. So I get to exhaust it and then resolve the sun, which does nothing. So I do get a song there, which is nice. And then now I can safely traverse. Well, I say safe because I need a two. And if I fail, I get an injury. I will commit Carbon Forged Trowel to make that three. So I got the exploration icon there. Three and a zero will be three progress added. It needs five, but that's fine for now. And then another sun gives me another song. I have one focus left. Let's get the day started by trying to remember my ranger training with a focus plus reason test. I'm just going to do a focus of one. Got a zero again. So I get to scout one ranger card and I got quiet. I think I like quiet. I'm going to keep quiet on top and then draw her and then resolve the crest. If this mission is attached, sensor network, but it's not. If now only mysterious Verdessian are in play, but they're not, this is exhausted. That'll give me a third song. All right, so we built up our song repertoire and this is a shuffle. So we'll shuffle these all back. All right, all in all, that wasn't a bad first round. We didn't uh, get anything interesting from Ale, the ambitious, ambitious Shaper. Uh, we also didn't get an injury and we did get some progress here. We built up some songs, so not bad. And then before we end the day, I will exhaust Prodigy of the Floating Tower, my roll card to choose a manifestation, my discard and add it to my hand. We'll get these scene through cycles back. So I can play that one again or commit it for tests. We'll energize and ready and draw. I do lose one cloud from a perfect day and draw a path card, which is a fetid bog. It's going to be along the way. Six harm or six progress. After being cleared by harm, attach it face down to this. During the refresh step, discard a face down card attached to it. X, its presence is equal to twice the number of face down cards attached. So it's really hard to get through because of the six and six, but it doesn't actually fatigue you until you start clearing things with harm. And on a mountain, it fatigues you uh, regardless, unless you exhaust your roll to avoid it. All right, for now, it's doing nothing. So we'll see if we're beating up Hydra Worms or not, and then they'd get attached to it. It's not what I was looking for, but at least it's not a Hydra Worm. I think I'm going to take a little bit slow through the swamp here. I'm going to play Scene Through Cycles again, and I'm going to get rid of this Hydra Worm, and I can search the discard pile. I'm just going to bring Ale back. Again, he's just going to be my tank. Now, I guess it's a little risky because I can't let him get cleared from harm. So if, once he's getting hit a couple times, I got to be careful. I got to clear him with progress. But for now, I'm going to do that. And then, I mean, now I can just traverse safely just so I am ready to travel whenever I want or need to. But again, I am risking an injury because I have to hit a two to succeed here, even though I only need two. I kind of need to make it a three. So I think I'm actually going to return scene through cycles to my hand and then commit it for its exploration icon. I have a three. I got a zero. So I add three more progress to the location. Resolve the crest, which does nothing, nothing, nothing because there's no predator. So that will give me three songs again. I don't really have anything to do unless I want to add progress to him just to kind of prime him for when I need to rescue him from uh, taking too much harm. But I risk one shot clearing him again like I did last time, but it's pretty unlikely. Let's just do one and then we got a zero. So we'll just add one progress to him. At the very least, like if I want to clear him with songs, it's fewer songs I have to spend, which is nice. Then the sun does nothing, so I'll get a fourth song. Very nice, another reshuffle. And let's try to draw another card. Got a plus one that's two, so I get to look at two cards. And I think I'm gonna send both of these to the bottom. Bold is fine, but I got all the progress I need. That's not gonna help me fight Hydra Worms or the Roiling. 
and I already have my Scepter of Harmony, so I'm going to send both those to the bottom. I'll actually put bold just on top, just in case. And then I still draw one, which is another copy of Seen Through Cycles. Oh, I didn't shuffle this one. All right, and then I'll end the round. There's nothing I can do with my awareness. Ready, draw, draw. Got an Intrepid Marmot. Not what I was looking for. They do fatigue me for one. When there are no predators on a sun, it makes me draw a path on a mountain. If there is a predator, it attacks the Marmot. But with focus and exploration, I can discern the movements of the courageous rodent to exhaust this being, add one progress to it, and two progress to a feature for every two effort. Well, I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm ready, I'm ready for the battle now. I think I'm going to scene through cycles again and... I'm going to replace the marmot with the roiling. Let's let's get this started. The roiling. Two presents being cleared with harm. Discard each hydro worm and read 72. We're also going to read 72 upon entry, which we did read before. But again, let's get back into the mood. Play some boss battle music. I don't really have any boss battle music. 72.1 says you push through the thick bunches of cattails and reeds, climbing over sunken logs and smooth rocks. Then with a start, you realize the rocks and logs are too smooth and too evenly shaped to be natural. One shifts beneath your hand and suddenly you realize you've been climbing around and through the tangled coils of many hydro worms. As they begin to writhe around you, massive worm bodies begins to rise out of the swamp. The worm knot looks like it's formed of dozens of hydro worms. The Goliath is too large to be anything but the roiling, the oldest and nastiest hydro worm in the valley. So I need to do seven harm. I could connect with 11 progress, but that doesn't let me read any entries. So we're going to beat this guy up. It's going to be along the way. Fortunately, Ale doesn't fatigue me because he's friendly. And uh, this is a predator, so he'll tank for me. Its presence is still two, so he can still take two hits. But it'll just be once per round regardless. Ooh, actually, he can't tank for me because this is along the way. It will resolve before Ale does. So that did not work out. So I'm just going to have to try to do this 7 ASAP. Because I, I mean, if I take an injury, it's not the end of the world. I just prefer to avoid it. So I'm going to start out with Quiet. Uh, she costs 2 Fitness Energy to play. She's friendly, persistent, and unique. And I can exhaust her to add 3 harm to a being. And harm to her equal to its presence. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Its presence is 2. So 2 harm is added to Quiet. And she adds 3 to the Roiling. I need four more. So quiet comes out. She is exhausted and should be able to sky whip. Let's see if I can do a four point sky whip. Two awareness is two and then conflict icons. I mean, I can do two more, make it four. Sure, we're going in here. Plus both these cards I'm committing are uh, manifestations. So if when I need them, I can return one at a time. I think I forgot to remove one cloud from Perfect Day. All right, so we're doing our Sky Whip awareness test to strike. We got two, three, four. I also have Throng of Life in my hand. Uh, this is a manifestation, so I actually have to spend a song. Checking for green is a zero, so I get my four. Add four more harm, and that will clear it. All right, we're ready for the fight. After all, we'll read 72. Point two, the roiling seems to have enough. The remaining heads snap back to the central body mass, wrapping around it protectively as the whole assembly thrashes and rolls deeper into the swamp. The roiling may be back in the future, but you've definitely scared it off for today. Well, that's not what I wanted. I want to find some cool stuff. Oh, and it should go face down attached to the bog, which means its presence is now two this round. Need to resolve the crest, which does nothing, nothing nothing so i'll get a song am i just gonna keep hanging out here until something happens until i find what i'm looking for i mean if i can find riri my sparrowhawk she can help me search so i guess i'll do a remember test see if i can draw a card again i got a zero so i get to scout one that is not riri so i'll send that to the bottom and draw green thumb which is also not her crest gives me a song and i will return a manifestation She's going to be, I guess, one of the Sky Whips. We will energize and ready and draw. Also not Riri. This gets discarded and this cloud is gone, which means the weather changes from a perfect day to a midday sun, which on the sun makes me take one fatigue. So that's around for a little while. Draw a path card. And it's a regular old Hydra Worm. Now Ale can tank for me. 
White can put a nice bit of damage on it, but then she'll go away. Although, that's her main use, so. Let's start off by trying to draw again. I want to see if I can draw Riri. I got a minus one, so it's a zero, so I don't get to scout or draw. The mountain will... It says exhaust your roll. If you don't, it fatigues you, but it's currently a zero, so I'll take it. This adds a token to the weather, which is nice. Our clouds start building up. And Hydroworm says it's if, in, if it's in the same area as another one, but it's not. So that didn't work. I think I'll just try to connect to the Hydroworm. Nine is a lot, but I'm not in a rush. So let's just do three. Minus one is two. Connect test is X. I need a two, but that's fine. So I'll just add two progress out of nine. The crest, nothing, nothing. Ale will take two harm for that, though. I think I'll spend two fitness just to play Carbon Forge Trowel. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but it's kind of nice to have in play, I guess. If we get some Flora, not sure. If I play a Vaulting Rod later and have to discard it, maybe it wasn't worth it. But and then I think I'm done. So Freddy, Energize, get a Cloud, draw. And a Path card is... Oh, okay. So this is the card I saw that I didn't want to say the spoilers for. Uh, this is from the regular Swamp set. But it is an overgrown reactor. It doesn't have an entry. I didn't actually read it. Let's see. I can activate the rumbling dynamo to add harm to each feature and being for every two effort. Well, I don't think I want to do that. If I clear it with harm, the crumbling structure churns the swamp. Draw a path card. If it's a hydro worm, it fatigues you. All right. Well, it is uh, along the way, which means I don't really have to worry about it because I've already added enough progress to the location. I can leave whenever I want. And this isn't an obstacle. So I think I'm just going to be ignoring it. Although I didn't read the icons. Let's see, mountain. If there's a hydro worm, add harm to this. All right. That doesn't matter to me. If there is a crest and a water feature within reach of one or more rangers, they suffer an injury. Well, there's not currently a water feature within reach of me. So I don't have to worry about that one either. All right. So it's not what I wanted, but I don't really care. Let's try to draw a card again. Got a plus one, so I will scout two bold and quiet man i wonder if i should keep the second quiet for fighting hydro worms i think so i really want riri but I mean, i guess i can just keep hanging out here send bold to the bottom resolve a sun which gives me my first fatigue of the day and hydro worm says it has any harm but it doesn't and then reshuffle and then i think i'll just try to connect to the hydro worm again for three plus one is four two four that puts it at six out of nine then another sun is another fatigue, and that's it. Pick up a manifestation. I don't remember if I forgot last round. I think I've seen through cycles just in case. Not sure if I should try to traverse the reactor. I don't really care about it. If I fail, I take an injury. So I think I'll just leave it and end the round again. I think I want to try to... I think I'm looking for the heart of the swamp. So if you're watching, you're like, what the heck is he doing? I think, I think the card I want is the heart of the swamp. So in the previous day... I found the heart of the swamp, and when I read the entry, it said, if you are at the marsh of rebirth, and I wasn't, so I didn't go to that entry. I went to a different entry, and I think that it ended up leading me here in the first place. So I think I need to find it again, but while I'm here in the marsh of rebirth. So that's that's kind of, I thought I was wanting to fight the roiling, but now that I did it and nothing really happened, um, I think it's the heart of the swamp that I'm looking for, and hopefully that is worth my time. So we'll add a third cloud, which flips the sun back to perfect day. Draw a card, and there's Riri. And then draw a path card, which is another Hydra Worm. So Riri is friendly, persistent, and unique, and I can exhaust her to add harm to a being in the same area as she is, or for awareness plus reason, I can survey the way ahead to scout path cards equal to my effort, and then draw a path card. So she can help me find the heart of the swamp. But now I've got these two hydro worms that I should probably deal with. And I'm going to try to finish off the connection with this hydro worm. So let's do another three. I'm risking a bit of harm, but I think that's okay. Three, I got a zero. So we'll just add three, which does clear this with connection, which is good. And the sun will do nothing. This one says if it has one or more harm, but it doesn't. So I actually get a song for that. And then I think I want to beat this one up. So we'll just use quiet. She will add three harm here and take two harm, which finishes her off because she's got a harm threshold of three. But then I can spend two fitness and bring her back with the second copy from my hand and do the same thing. So she'll have two and this one is cleared. This one's cleared with harm. So I add harm to each other hydro worm in play uh, and then attach it to the bog, but doesn't matter. 
I'll go ahead and spend my awareness to bring out Riri, but now I can't use her ability, but that's fine. We'll wait. And do I want to try to draw again? I think I'm good on cards. I'm going to stop drawing or trying to draw with my uh, remember test. Let's pick up another manifestation, grab shape the earth, I guess, and go to the next round again. Take away a cloud, draw a card, draw a path, and there's a marmot. Oh, and this should be discarded. All right, I'm just going to try to connect with the marmot to clear that. We're going to do three. Let's make it four with one connection icon so I can afford a minus one. I got a plus one, so that will clear the marmot with connection. And the mountain adds extra progress, but it was cleared anyway. Exhaust your roll if you don't, it fatigues you. I mean, I guess technically those are effects resolving. I don't know. I mean, this one, I'm not going to... So yeah, these are two, actually two interesting rules questions at the same time. It says, if this test added progress, add an additional one. Well, it did add progress, but it cleared it. So adding extra doesn't really do anything. So that makes me call into question whether it resolved for the purpose of Scepter of Harmony, which would give me another song. It says, after you perform a test in which no challenge effects were resolved, add a song to this conduit. So does this count as resolving if it doesn't really have an effect? I don't know. I think I've been playing it as though it does not. So... Maybe I just keep going with that. There's also the Fetid Bog, which says you may exhaust your roll. If you do not, this feature fatigues you. Well, it would fatigue me for zero, so it has no effect either. So does that count as resolving? I don't know, but I guess I would play it as if it has no effect, then it didn't really resolve. Uh, the Reactor says if there's an active Hydra Worm. Now, this one is a clear example where they kind of clarify in the rules, or in the FAQ, rather, that this one does not, definitely does not count as resolving because it has the arrows. If there's an active Hydra Worm, but there's not, so you don't resolve anything after the arrow, which means it didn't resolve. Uh, however, Ail Ambitious Shaper says add a token to the weather, so regardless of anything else, I'm not getting a song, because that definitely takes effect. All right, now I will use Riri's Scout Test. Awareness and Reason. Scout Path cards equal to my effort, and then draw one. Reason icons, huh? Let's add one from Scene Through Cycles. I don't have a lot of reason, but let's do... Uh, let's make it a three. I got a plus one, so I get to Scout four cards and then draw one hopefully the heart of the swamp is in these and it is so this will be the one i'm drawing and we got marmot black mud black mud i don't really want any black mud these are obstacles that would stop me from traveling so i'm going to send these to the bottom i'm not thrilled about the marmot but it's better than a hydra worm so i'll leave it on the top resolve a mountain again which will be another cloud and we're up to four clouds it's more than the normal number very cloudy thanks to ale and then let's take a look at Heart of the Swamp. So this is what I was looking for. Hopefully this is worth it. With spirit and exploration, I can imagine life as a hydro worm to intuit the location of their lair to add progress equal to my effort. If I clear it with progress, set it aside. When you travel, you can travel to the Marsh of Rebirth. I'm already here. I might have been wasting my time. All right, let's read 9.1. For the last hour, the ground under your feet has been growing soggier. The rich scent of loam and decay fills your nose. Finally, you walk under a corridor of arching boughs draped with hanging moss and find yourself standing on a narrow spit of dry land leading into a morass of black water vines and cypress trees you found a path that leads to the marsh of rebirth now there, i do see that if i clear it wait is that something else i'm kind of cheating i'm looking at the entries it's 9.2 that says if you're at the marsh of rebirth but i don't know how to read 9.2 oh, it was something else it was a different location it wasn't one of the four i just looked at so at least there's that it's somewhere deeper in the deck i guess I think there's a, there's a different card, Swamp card, that I'm actually looking for. All right. Well, at least this one has zero presence. So it is along the way, and it is yet another card I don't care about. So let's just put it out there, and we'll have to keep digging. Nothing out here is currently bothering me. There's nothing to do. So I'm just going to pick up a Manifestation and end my turn again. Ready. Energize. Draw. Now I'm drawing the Marmot, which isn't really what I wanted. But let's scout again. I'll commit scene through cycles again. Three and a zero this time. So you get to look at three cards. This deck's getting pretty small. So yeah, these are the two black whatevers I just put on the bottom. So whatever I'm looking for, it's got to be here, right? It is the overgrown ruins. That was the one, I think. And then two hydro worms. I think they're actually better than the mud. Actually, maybe not. Let's put the mud next. Do need to resolve the sun. There's an odd number of progress, but there's not. There are no predators in play, and there aren't. So actually, the marmot makes me draw another path card. 
unfortunately, and that is going to be the mud. So we're getting the ruins and the mud. All right, so awareness plus exploration to discover a way into the ancient structure, move my ranger icon to the feature. If I clear it with progress and my ranger icon is there, I delve into it and read 9.2. So it's a two-step process I need to discover and then clear. So let's put that out. Although now I do have this mud to worry about. The mud is going to be within reach. It's an obstacle, so I can't actually interact with anything out along the way. And I can't travel. It's a maximum of one progress per test. Or five harm. How do I add harm to it? This is the most crowded board I've had so far. All right, so I'm not going to be able to finish the ruins this round because I just spent my awareness to find it. And I have to use awareness to discover the way into the ancient structure. Uh, apologies if this will disjoint. I just was away for a few minutes. But getting back into the process here, I'm going to play Shape the Earth. Spend two fitness and one song to manifest it. Add a progress to each feature. This is going to be the biggest Shape the Earth I've ever done. Uh, add a progress to each feature and location and then redistribute it all between them. I've got a location, one, two, three, four, five features. That is six progress that I get to add and then rearrange however I want. The mud needs three. So I'm going to clear that. Uh, it says you can add a maximum of one progress per test, but this isn't a test. So I'm just going to shape the earth, the mud right off the table. I still have three more. And I'll just put that on the overgrown ruins. It won't clear until five. Uh, but that is a great start. And then I think I'm going to return that to my hand so that I can do it again. I have a two copies, but uh, I'm definitely going to want to play another one next round uh, to finish off the Overgrown Ruins real quick. The only other thing would be, like, do I want to get rid of the Marmot since it's exhausted for now? Port readies. I guess I can connect with it so I don't have to harm it. I can keep quiet. Forget there's a lot of uh, challenge icons. I'm not sure if these are going to backfire on me, but let's just do three. Let's just stick with three. I got a zero. So three will add three, which does clear it. And then sun. There's an odd number of progress, but there's not. So it's actually a song. And I think that's it for this round. So we'll energize and ready and draw. Now I'm going to be drawing the other black mud. And I got to lose a cloud. But I can just play Shape the Earth again with another song in my fitness. We got six again. We'll do three here again. I don't want to, it's because it's an obstacle. So I can't actually interact with anything else farther away because if it's an obstacle. So I got to do that first. So two more would clear this, but I can't clear it. or I don't want to clear it until I put my Ranger icon there. So I'm going to have to clear it a different way if I want to finish it this round. I also know there are only two more cards in the path deck, and they're both Hydra Worms, which isn't the end of the world, but um, something to be aware of. So we're up. I might have to traverse this, but I can't because I just spent my fitness. So how am I going to add progress here? I don't think I can add progress. So I'm going to have to go into next round. But the other three on the reactor, I don't know which one, the reactor or the bog, which one's more annoying. Neither of them is annoying at all. So it's just like, is either of them even a little bit annoying? I also have an extra on this Marsh of Rebirth, so I can actually afford to take one off of that during my redistribution. And maybe put a fourth one here. Uh, still doesn't clear until I get six, though. Let's pick back up the Shape the Earth again. I think I'll spend two Spirit to play Ranger Badge. And this is going to attach to my roll, and I can exhaust it and use one of the three XP that it starts with in order to um, well, ready my roll, so I can do that again. Uh, I'm going to spend one right away, so it's just going to have two and ready my roll, but then exhaust it again to pick up a second manifestation. Just have more cards in my hand. I guess seen through cycles is fine. I'm going to have to look up what happens if the path deck is, runs out. Do you reshuffle it? Yep, it's probably not going to happen, but I was just curious. I mean, it could happen. I think I'm just going to pass here. Energize back up and draw, and we get a Hydra Worm. I can use Quiet to put three harm and then Sky Whip it, which would probably finish it off. I just drew one of my Nal's Understanding, so I could put five progress after spending four songs to put four on it and clear it with nine progress, but that would run me out of songs. I can also just avoid it with the Avoid test, although Sky Whip also will exhaust it, even if I don't put enough harm on it. So maybe let's just do that. Spend my awareness on that anyway. Uh, I do have to spend a song for that, though. So we're at two. 
Let's just commit a uh, shape the earth and our tails vaulting rod, make that four. And I got a zero, so it stays as four. And we'll put four harm on it and exhaust it. And then I'll use Riri's ability, exhaust to add a harm to a being in the same area, which will get rid of, uh, clear the hydra worm, attach it to the fetid bog, and resolve the crest. No, 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 no. So I'll get my song back. And sure, I'll get back the sky whip. And let's shape the earth again. This time I only have five. One, two, three, four features and a location. Oh no, I need to wait. I need to add my icon here first. So let's put that back and, oh, I just spent the awareness. What am I doing? So do I just need to take the Hydra Worm Fatigue? Because if I Sky Whip it, I had to spend my awareness on that. And I need awareness for this. Ugh, whoops. All right, I'll spend two Spirit to play Philosopher's Honey. Uh, it's going to have three dollops of honey. I'll spend one and exhaust it to soothe one fatigue because I have one focus. So you get one more card, which is the other Philosopher's Honey. I can do that two more times. Go ahead and use the Ranger badge and get back, I don't know, the other throng of life. All right, I'm just kind of wasting another round here. All right, we're going to get another Hydra Worm, but I'm going to deal with it in some way without spending my awareness this time. Because the whole point is to solve these ruins. Draw and draw. That's the last card. The path deck is now empty. And this should be discarded. This should go away. Two clouds left. And I can just take two fatigue and ignore it. Because I really don't want to spend all my songs on it. I guess I could connect and then play Nile's Understanding. But then I need to save one to play Nile's Understanding. Which means I can only connect for two and save one. Nile's Understanding adds five. So with my two committed energy, I need to get at least four progress added. I'm doing all this to avoid two fatigue because seven cards left in my deck. It's not too bad. I really just, I need to finish here, which I feel like this is the last thing I need to do. I've already put the progress in the location, so I can just end the round in a different location. And then I need to traverse that location to get to Spire. Uh, nope, actually, first of all, not Spire, it's Tumble Down. With the Marsh of Rebirth, so I'd be traveling to the Frowning Gate. So I need to traverse Frowning Gate and Bowl of the Sun to get to tumble down. It doesn't have to be today, but I kind of like to. All right, so I've committed the two um, spirit energy to do a basic common connect test. Connect or commit a heart from Philosopher's Honey makes it three. And then one from Green Thumb is four. And we got a zero, so that's nice. Four stands, I'll add four progress. Needs nine, so that's perfect because now's understanding adds five. The crest is no, no. Water feature within reach, no. Active predator, yes. So L takes another hit from Hydra Worm up to four harm. His threshold is five, so he is in the danger zone now. His little health bar is blinking. And then I will spend one spirit energy to play Nal's Understanding, which adds five progress to a being. And then if it hasn't cleared, blah, 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 because it is cleared. So that is out of the way. And I saved my awareness so I can do the discover test. Discover two, awareness plus exploration. I need a two. I have two. Minus one would mess me up. But I'm going to keep it because I can play Throng of Life as long as there's a, a zero somewhere on the card. I'm fine. I got a zero. So I'm good to go. I get to add my icon to it. My ranger badge thingy, uh, crest, no, 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 no. Get a song. And now I just need to finish that with two more. So let's go ahead and shape the earth again. And I get one, two, three, four, five progress. We need two here. Two can go onto the reactor to finish it off. And one can go somewhere else. So we're clearing the overgrown ruins and it had my badge. So I get to read, I get to delve into the ruins and read 9.2. This had better be worth it. If you were at the Marsh of Rebirth, there's 9.3. The bunker is so covered in mud and reeds that it looks like just another hillock rising out of the swamp, but you spot a corner of dull carbon composite peeking through the grass. You find a hatch, pry it open and cautiously climb into the black cavernous interior. Once inside, you see a series of rooms. Most are empty and overgrown, but in one room, you find what appears to be a small dish of liquid metal with Estian script among the rim. 
you apply a universal power cell to the recharge port, and with some fiddling, you activate the device. Ripples flash across the surface, and suddenly the metal reforms into a topographical map of the swamp replicated in stunning detail. Gain the topogramophone. Topographone. Topographone. Gain the topographone reward card. Well, I hope this is one I can use, because I put a lot of work into finding it. If this is really the end game of this little Marsh of Rebirth quest. All right, topographone. Two awareness, two graphs. Well, I can't afford the awareness. Two reason icons, which I'm pretty scant on, and an exploration. Awareness plus reason, use a graph to calibrate the device to your current environment to scout two path cards for every effort. That seems pretty good. Two path cards for every one effort. So if I just get a two, I can look at four cards. If I get a one, I can scout two cards. You don't don't immediately draw, um, but you definitely get to craft what's coming next pretty well. It's a little bit redundant with Riri, uh, but as you could see earlier on in this scenario, I could have used this effect earlier, and this is a pretty powerful way to do it because you get to you don't draw a path right away, but you get to look at and scout twice as many, plus the reason icons. So I think I'll find room for this in my deck once I uh, rest again or camp out. So overgrown ruins are gone, and that was the Swamp of Rebirth. Now I think I got one focus left, but I'll just go ahead and end the round. We'll go or end end step two of the round. Go into step three. Travel. I have the progress and the location. There are no obstacles, so I'm out of here. And I'm heading to the Frowning Gate. So it's still going to be Swamp, but I'm going to use three Valley cards instead of the Marsh of Rebirth cards. So Ale is out of here just in time. And the Roiling is done. Should have at least gotten like a keyword for beating the Roiling. All right, three random Valley cards in the Frowning Gate. Shuffle this together. Let's take a look at the Frowning Gate. Ooh, a three. Three presents. Four to traverse. Uh, so hopefully you can get that done in a single test. And then a mountain. Remove a progress from a path card. If you can't, suffer an injury. Whoa. So if there's no path cards out, I won't be able to. And I'll take an injury just for resolving a mountain. I don't like this. Now I'm frowning too. Me and the gate. Lead Ranger, draw a path card. And then we're going to read 32. My path card is Umbra. All right. 32, the frowning gate. Although the land around the swamp is thick with trees overgrown with moss and vines, you recognize the infamous frowning gate as you approach. Ancient trees curl over the path to form a gnarled arch, heavy with drooping curtains of moss and choked with vines. Beyond the arch, the trail descends to the depths of the swamp. Except for that I'm coming from inside the swamp. And I want to get out of here as fast as I can. All right, so this is coming out. Umbra is my path card. So this is from the valley set. It's going to be along the way. It's persistent, though. And we'll go ahead and read 89, even though we have met Umbra before. It's been a little while. A dark shadow flashes over your head and you duck as the shadow banks around and heads back toward you. You raise your hand to shield your gaze and stare up, quickly spotting the terrifying form of the massive raptor. Her body is big as a stilt horse and massive beak open in a terrifying screech. So with spirit and conflict, I can scare off the massive raptor to put it on top of the path deck. But if you fail, suffer an injury. And that's a three to succeed on a sun. If it's along the way, move it within reach and it fatigues you for three because it's got a big old three presence. If it is within reach on a crest, exhaust it and you take an injury. So not thrilled about this. All right, then uh, that was step three travel. Step four, we'll go ahead and refresh. Lose a cloud and draw. And then step one, draw a path card. And it's a Hydra Worm. So now we got plenty of friends. I just want to get out of here. I don't remember if I used the honey. I'll use the honey now, though. Soothe my other fatigue. Wyatt can hit for three. But Riri cannot finish off Umbra because they're not in the same area. Unless I let Umbra hit a sun and then come in. But then she'll fatigue me for three. And I don't want that either. I could do like awareness to exhaust the Hydra Worm, spirit to try to scare off Umbra, and then fitness to traverse and just try to get out of here. That sounds possible, but that's three tests that could be risky. So I think that's what I got to try for at least. Do I whip the Hydra Worm or just avoid it? I think I want to just avoid it. 
save cards. I do need a two though to exhaust it. I have a two. Let's make it a three with one throng of life. Got a zero, so didn't need it, but that will exhaust the Hydra Worm. The mountain gives me an injury. The Frowning Gate. Remove progress from a path card if you cannot suffer an injury. Wow. All right, so I take an injury, which means every time I rest, I take a fatigue. And if I had any fatigue, I would discard it all. So that was a bummer. At least we're getting toward the end of the day. Now let's use Umbra's Spirit Test. I need a three. It's Spirit plus Conflict. I have three. I'll commit one Sky Whip. I say one. That's the only one in my hand currently. And that makes it four. So I can afford a minus one. I got a plus one. Fine. So I succeed, which means this goes back on top. So it's persistent. So it would follow me. But it's currently not here. So if I can traverse or travel this round... Uh, I'll get away. And that's another mountain. That's another injury. I'm going to be getting fatigued anyway. So, yeah, I'm really running out of time. I mean, I got six cards left. I'm going to take two fatigue at the end of this round now because I have two injuries. What is all this frowning? Why am I getting injured so much? Oh, no. It looks like a pretty place. I don't know why I got to get injured so bad. So now we're going to do the basic traverse test. I need... Three to succeed. If I don't get at least three, I take an injury. But really, I want to get four so that I can just get out of here. I've got two. I'm going to commit a ranger badge with two exploration. That makes it four. And another copy of Riri. That makes it five. Uh, so I can afford a minus one again on red. I got a plus one. So keep committing cards that I didn't need. But there you go. That is five progress on the location. The sun does nothing. So I will get a song. And a reshuffle. All right, I'm going to use my roll card to pick up, I think, the Sky Whip. I have another Throng of Life in my hand currently. That would be the main other one I want to have on hand. I can pick them up next round if I need it. So I'm going to end the Ranger turn by resting. Because now I've got two injuries, that means resting gives me two fatigue. And then I'll energize, draw, ready. And I drew one of the bolds. Oh, and I'm traveling first. Sorry. So I shouldn't actually energize or ready yet. I'm traveling. So we'll discard the Hydra Worm. And we are replacing the Frowning Gate. Heading south to the Bowl of the Sun. Traveling by way of mountains. So our swamp is gone. We're back in the mountains. So Umbra's out. Along with our other valley cards. Swamp's gone. Reshuffle the valley again. One, two, three. Get the mountain pass. Shuffle that up and then take away the frowning gate for somewhere that will hopefully make me frown less. The bowl of the sun. Let's take a look. We got one uh, one presence. That's much easier. Three to travel. Focus plus connection to meditate and the cultivated garden to soothe fatigue equal to your effort. Very cute. All right. So this is a placid place. Path deck assembly. One of the three cards added from the valley set must be the fundamentalist. And arrival setup is draw two. All right, I guess I should have read that first. Well, I guess I just got to redo that then. Old Bloody Clicker, Ren Kobo, and Tala Red were going to be our valley cards. But instead, we're going to have the fundamentalist and two randos. Shuffle that again. This must be his favorite place. Keep running into him along our journeys. He was on the way to the Bowl of Sun the whole time. All right, him and two more are going into the mountain set. And then I need to draw two. We got fresh Sitka carcass and an Arcology sinkhole. Well, that was in the valley set a second ago, and then it got reshuffled and redrawn. That's fun. We're going to read 37 for the Bowl of the Sun. In a massive pothole carved over the centuries into the red-hued rock, someone has built a flourishing garden. Pipes, presumably carrying water, lead to and from the pothole and to smaller potholes on the periphery, each also growing carefully cultivated varieties of foliage. It's as if the sun-kissed plateau housed a living lexicon of every plant in the valley and beyond. I remember clearing the fundamentalist and he didn't really do anything. But now I'm wondering if he had, like, if you are at such and such, do you read a different entry? And I wonder if this is his place. Like the Bowl of the Sun might be like a special thing for him, considering the fact that I just had to shuffle him in. Well, we'll see if he comes out. If he does, I will be tempted to clear him. Even though in the past when I've cleared him, it didn't really do anything. Um, also, read entry 78 for the Arcology Sinkhole Path card. I think I've drawn this one before as well, but 
I didn't have time to deal with it. I don't know if I do now either. 78.1 says the land suddenly drops away in front of you. Luckily, you are paying attention and you catch yourself before you go tumbling down a steep slope. You stand on the edge of a large pit where it looks like an entire grove of trees has collapsed into the ground not long ago. Between the tangled mass of splintered trunks, you can see what looks like a broken steel archway and cracked pipes leading into darkness. The sinkhole may have exposed a new route into the old arcology beneath the valley. Clear the arcology sinkhole with progress to explore its depths. Or did I do this before? Don't know. All right, so that's set up. Let's take a look at both our cards. Our arcology sinkhole we just read. With awareness and exploration, I can explore the labyrinthine underground, underground structure to move my ranger token there. If I clear it with progress while my token's there, I get to delve deeper and read 78. Clears with three. And now that I've got two features and a location, I could actually shape the earth to clear that pretty quickly. I would just need to use the awareness to put my token there first. Let's take a look at the other one, the fresh Sitka carcass, three presents, prey, with awareness plus connection, watch for opportunities, no, watch for opt no, watch for opportunistic carnivores to move my token to this feature, which would clear it. On the sun, if your token is not on this feature, exhaust it, search the path deck for a predator, put it into play. On a mountain, if there's a predator, exhaust it and add harm to this feature equal to that predator's presence. Okay, so this uh, Sitka carcass kind of needs to be dealt with because of that big old three presence would fatigue me pretty hard if I try to traverse the location first. But one awareness test puts my icon on it, which clears it. But I kind of want to use my awareness for the sinkhole, but I also kind of just want to travel and just get to the next location. Technically, I can do both of these tests with one awareness each and then just rely on my cards for the icons. All right, I'm going to soothe one with my honey and got a familiar ground and then I'll go ahead and discard it because it has no more honey. And I think I will split my awareness. I'm going to commit one to the sinkhole to explore there. I'm going to commit one familiar ground for one exploration icon. So I have a two. I need a two to succeed. All right, I'm also gonna commit scene through cycles. So I have three, I got a zero. Again, committing things I don't need. Three will let me add my icon there. Mountain, or did I, I think I forgot the perfect day. I think I should have removed a cloud and we should be on the midday sun. But still mountain is a no, no. Discard progress from a feature. If you can't, this card fatigues you. Oh my gosh, Uh. okay, well. I guess this is it then. I'm not going to be able to get to tumble down because as soon as I rest, I will be fatigued for two and I only have one card left. So this is it. May as well dig into the sinkhole. So it's not even any point to traverse the location because I'm going to have to, I, I'm not going to be able to make it to the travel step. So even if I get progress here, I will have to rest during the ranger turn. I don't have enough cards in my deck to afford the fatigue I'm going to take from my injuries. And so I don't make it to step three. So there's no point in even putting progress here. I'm going to have to start the next day at the bowl of the sun, not the end of the world. Um, so let's make the best of it and just dig into the sinkhole before we go. So I'm going to play. I think I need to first pick it up. I'm going to exhaust my roll to get a copy of shape the earth, which I will then play for two fitness and a song. I have two features and a location, so I get to distribute three progress. I'll put all three on the sinkhole, which clears it. And because my token is there, I'll read 78. I hope I didn't do this already. Or if I did, I hope it's not a complete waste. Although, I guess at this point, I got nothing else to do. I would have needed to get rid of the carcass at the very least in order to be able to travel. And the ruin also just gives two, has two presents, so I would take fatigue from this if I didn't clear it. So really, I needed to clear both of them. I didn't need to explore first. I didn't need to put my ranger icon on the sinkhole. So I guess there's a possibility that if this isn't relevant, that it was a complete waste, and I could have possibly just gotten rid of this right off the bat. Yeah, I could have just played the Shape the Earth, gotten rid of the sinkhole. So we'll see if I regret that. But it says it takes all morning to use a foldable carbon forged saw to cut the tree trunks, then winch them up a jury rigged block and tackle. By the time the sun is high overhead, you've managed to clear a path to the archway. It turns out that the archway leads to a maze of passageways. You explore a little way in, but worry about getting lost. 
The worn print carved into the walls is in a language utterly alien to you and is useless for navigation. Even so, you find a storage locker a few dozen meters down that still has some portable power cells. Their construction is marvelous. Even after thousands of years, you can still use them to change your gear. Perhaps if you could read the writing on the walls, you might be able to find greater treasures further in. You think you remember someone named Solaro in White Sky who was studying the arcology. Maybe he can help. The stranger can either refill all tokens on a tech card or search their deck for a tech card and put into play. Well, that does sound kind of familiar. I'm supposed to find somebody at White Sky. I don't think I have a tech card in my deck. I don't. It's bold. I don't have any tech cards in play to charge up. So just a waste. Now I can try to meditate to soothe fatigue, but that doesn't solve the problem that I have. So I'm just going to be ending up ending the day here. There's no way to avoid it. So I can't get an extra card in my deck and I can't get rid of an injury. So that's all there is to it. So I have to end the day here. I cannot camp out because I'm not successfully traveling. So I also cannot add the uh, topographone, topographone to my deck yet. We'll start day 10 here. It's going to be a downpour and I'm going to have to read that entry to find out what happens from that go to spire quest. And then I'm so close. I feel like regardless of what that says, I'm just going to go to tumble down next because it's just one look one travel away and we get to complete this deeper motives mission so we'll see how that pans out in the next episode i hope you like the video thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and bye